Veggie Grill's vegan buffalo chicken sandwich is one of my all time favorites. And today I'm taking on the challenge of making one just as good at home. And for my fellow food nerds at the end, we'll talk shop on what went well and what could be improved. With that said, let's go get it. So we're going to Veggie Grilly. I don't know why I do that. I always put the E at the end. Veggie Grill does not have an E, but you know how sometimes like old timey restaurants will have like the E on there? Yeah, I don't know. There it is. All right, we're back from Veggie Grill. Let's see what we got. Ooh, it's like a little present. The buffalo sauce is not overpowering. The only thing missing, there's not really a crunch to it. Overall, fantastic burger. I'm excited to see if I can create this at home. All right, so the crown jewel here is the chicken patty slathered with sauce. Ooh, that is looking good. And we'll be using my variation on a wonderful recipe by Pizza Is Lovely, which I've linked below. To get started, slaughter your tofu and then press it. I use a giant book and let this press for about 30 minutes. It doesn't need to be exact. Once done, weigh out 348 grams of your tofu and have a little snack with any leftover. Then we're gonna go ahead and take a can, yes, a can of cannellini beans and we're gonna drain and keep the liquid, weighing it to make sure you have 150 grams of liquid and 250 grams of actual beans in the can. Once you've confirmed your weight, scoop in your beans and bean juice into a high-powered blender along with your tofu. Oop, that guy doesn't wanna get in there. Then we're adding two teaspoons of poultry seasoning, one teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda. I've unfortunately done that one before. One teaspoon fine sea salt, a half teaspoon MSG, three tablespoons of avocado, oil, one teaspoon white miso paste, and one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And then blend that up. You're gonna have a hard time. I mean, I did at least getting this to liquefy, but it must. Go ahead and pause and just scrape down the sides as needed. I had to do this a few times. Once this is blended up and it is very, very smooth, this was mine at the end here, just for your reference, go ahead and weigh out 370 grams of vital wheat gluten into a bowl, along with two teaspoons of onion and garlic powder and whisk that on up. Dump your blender mix into the gluten and scrape out what you can from the blender. You're not gonna get it all out, so don't sweat it and work the mix into the gluten. You're gonna get a nice little dough and knead that for about a minute until it all comes together and there's no powdered gluten left. Let it rest for about 30 minutes just to allow the gluten to relax so you can shape it better. After the rest, stretch the dough into a log. What I'm doing here is squeezing the dough while stretching from the center and turning to make sure I apply even pressure to all sides. This is gonna make sure that the gluten strands all go in the same direction in the final product. Now measure out your cuts. I want these burgers huge, so I'm measuring out three to four inch slices. I wouldn't go any larger than this. I'd recommend actually doing one to two inch thick slices or at least cutting some that size the first time you try this recipe. I wanted some of these to be tender, so I cut one of these in half. Speaking of which, you can cut the chicken whatever shape you want, tenders, nuggets, whatever. Roll out your cuts. If you have a rolling pin, great, but I don't have one, so I'm tagging in this half-drank bottle of wine. I don't have that HGTV Food Network budget, y'all, so you're getting some real life here. Mine came out to one inch wide by four inches long. If you cut smaller shapes, you can roll them out to as thin as a half inch wide, and they will be super filling still. So it's okay if they all look a little bit different. I actually tried to not make mine exact circles just because I think it looks a little weird for a chicken burger to be a perfect circle. Little imperfections, keep them, love them, embrace them. Now lay those on an oven safe cooling rack on a baking sheet, slap those in the oven for 20 minutes at 350 F, 170C. What we're doing here is par baking these so they keep their shape during the simmer. When you take them out of the oven, they might be a little puffy. Don't worry about that, totally normal. So a little shortcut for the stock, I'm using this stuff, but you don't have to. Now throw your par baked chicky boys into a pot of boiling vegan chicken stock and immediately cool to a gentle simmer for 20 minutes. Now don't let it boil during the rest of the cooking. I say this almost every video, it is the easiest way to destroy a recipe. When time is up, turn off the heat and cover them with the lid. And once they cool down, I just put the whole thing in the fridge overnight to let the gluten develop further. All right, so it's the next day and it's time to fry. Create your breading station by mixing together 200 grams of flour, 100 grams of cornstarch, one teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder, one teaspoon MSG, a tablespoon of kosher salt, and a half teaspoon of paprika. Then whisk that all up and set it aside and create the wash. 
I was talking with my buddy over at the channel, The Burger Dude, and he recommended this stuff. So we're gonna give it a shot. So go ahead and pour a cup of plant-based milk. You can use full fat oat milk if you don't have this specifically, five grams of salt, and a couple splashes of vinegar. Nothing scientific here. I probably put in a tablespoon slash a tablespoon and a half. I'm not really sure. Whisk to combine, and if it's curdling, you're in business. Pro tip here, throw about a fourth cup of your chicken wash into your dredge, using a fork to mix it into clumps in the flour. This is gonna create nice crispy bits on the patty. Dink your chicken patty in the wash with your wet hand, get it all covered and roll it around. Then with your dry hand, cover with flour. Press down, making sure to really get it in the nooks and stuff. Since it's a crispy chicken sandwich, we're gonna dredge this again. This is gonna give it a nice bigger crunch than if you just batter once, and it's going to create really big flecks of flavor on there. Now pop your dredged patty in a few inches of oil, heat it as close as you can get to 375 degrees F, 190C for three to five minutes. These are best served right away, but if needed, you can keep these crispy in an oven set to 200F, 95C, so they'll last a while. To a nice toasted bun bottom, ooh. Dial up some vegan mayo, apply some fresh lettuce, Veggie Grill uses shredded lettuce, but I prefer a leaf, sue me. Then delicately place your crown jewel, the crispy chicken patty. Gently coat your sandwich to taste with buffalo sauce. I personally don't like it when these things are swimming in buff sauce. Plus we must protect the integrity of the crunch. Tomatoes if you got them, salt them if you like. Pop on some pickies and finish with another toasted mayo bun. Now we compare. We've got Veggie Grill, we've got mine. Ooh, this is a big boy. Okay. Since it was called a crispy buffalo chicken sandwich, I wanted to make it crispy. That's there, big crunch. All around, fantastic. I wish I would have made it a little shorter, but let's dig into veggie grills. So these are both excellent. If you're looking for a fun thing to make at home, this is what you wanna go for. If you're looking for a really good, quick meal, then veggie grill is what you need to go to. Both fantastic, two different takes in the same concept, and I'm very happy with both. So let's talk about the pros and cons. So obviously when you make food at home, you can make it however you like it. I personally don't like a ton of buffalo sauce on mine, I just like a hint. Therefore, I thought that was good. Also, the double dredge was fantastic. Really created a nice crispy layer around the patty. So while each bite was fantastic and the texture was really good, I would have liked more grain, which means I likely could have kneaded it for longer. In the recipe, they recommend using a food processor to knead the dough, but I ended up doing it by hand because my food processor just couldn't handle that amount of gluten. So if you liked this episode, you would absolutely love my shredded chicken episode. Go ahead and click the link on your screen now. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, y'all be nice to each other and keep cooking.